Hello, um, this is Nigel Mortimer. I thought I'd just make this uh, slide documentary really um, about the revelations that have come around just recently after uh, Jeffrey Epstein's death and all of the information that's coming out from his uh, island at uh, Little St. James in the US Virgin Islands Territory. Uh, it's just been astounding for me. Um, as many of you will know, and the people that don't know this is for the first time, um, I advise you before you look at this mini documentary to actually go and uh, either purchase a copy of my book or, or get hold of the information from the book somewhere. Uh, I wrote a couple of years ago called Isaac Newton and the Secret Sundial. It's actually available still on Amazon. Um, you'll get all the background to what, what I'm talking about here and uh, it'll make more sense to you. But for those that already who have, have a knowledge of that and my and my wife's involvement in the discovery of what we believe is an interdimensional portal area in settling North Yorkshire uh, in the UK. Well, I was absolutely astounded when I saw the uh, the visual information that was coming through from the people that had flown drones over the Epstein's Island, uh, the temple, the um, imagery that's all around it. But foremost stood out absolutely amazingly is this uh, sundial within a stone circle that Epstein um, had, had built there and put on the island. So that reminded me so much of what we found at the Settle Sundial Portal. And um, I'm, I can say this before we even start, but what I'm going to try and evidence here um, is my belief that Epstein had a definite knowledge of, of the occult uh sacrificial and ritual you know um use of these sites uh and um probably for nefarious and for evil purposes as it's all coming out now uh possibly child sacrifice um and i do believe that the imagery that i'll show you will prove to you that he was absolutely uh if not himself, but people around him, the high elites are absolutely aware of the portals, that they understand how they work. And I, as I have always mentioned in my books, this is nothing new. It goes way back to ancient times. And uh, those in the uh, Freemasons and those in the upper echelons of uh, secret societies will know about these portals and, and the significance of how they uh, are able to be used to bring through um, knowledge and interdimensional entities for their own gain. Um, so in this slide representation, what we're going to be examining is the similarities between the Epstein Island uh, territory symbology and what I found at the Settle Portal site. You'll see that it's far away too big to be a coincidence. Um, but there is another reason behind this. Uh, normally, I would have just looked at this and and I'd be quite satisfied myself to see that uh, this just underlines what we found to be correct. Uh, but also, you'll see, I'm going to talk about it right at the end of the uh, slides, there is a, a significant um, significance in that uh, the attacks that were coming around for myself and my wife while we were investigating the cell portal sundial site uh, from people within the UFO community all seems to make sense now and i'll go into that um in more detail at the end of this okay um well we're going to look at aspects of like the dome temple the ground mazes uh the sundial in the stone circle the owl um imagery which which traditionally is moloch sacrifice child sacrifice and there are even underground tunnel systems all of these things were found at the settle sundial portal between 2009 to 2000 and well still ongoing really um at both sides the significance of the freemasons i'm not saying all freemasons i never do because i have friends who are freemasons who have no idea about any of this um they're just charity workers and people that help other businesses but the freemasons at the top of the pyramid so to speak are fully aware of all of this uh, and the significance between them and the children going missing at both sides believe you me there have been uh, children that have been um, sexually abused around the settle sundial um, and the associated giggles with chapel area which i will briefly touch on but again it's all in the book um you'll see that the connections there uh i must note though i have no evidence that that is uh 
going on in Settle at this time, uh, and it's probably historical. I would imagine it is all historical. Uh, Darsh and Day, I'm just going to finish off this first introduction with a thing from a guy called Darsh and Day on the 11th of July on Twitter, uh, stated this, and I thought this just puts it all in a nutshell, really. He, he supposed and said, maybe the island was selected because it was located on a convergence of ley lines. Was the temple built to open a portal to what some might call hell? Sacrifices and rituals were performed there for acquiring power, maybe. And that is really what this is all about. Um, the uh, acquiring of power and also um, energy, really, to, to, to actually uh, gain knowledge and to have power over others. So um, it's been going on a very long time, as I've said, even from ancient times. And it's just going to be fascinating for me to be able to show you, after all the mocking I got, really, uh, from this small group of people within ufology who did have a purpose. I mean, anybody could see that it wasn't just a, a personal thing. They would do anything they could to actually stop this information coming out. And I haven't talked about it for a couple of years now, so they'll probably think they've won. But as I said before, isn't it funny how um, these things come about, even though, you know, the truth always surfaces in the end it has to do it's just a part of nature it has to actually expose itself as the truth and um i want to little, read this little quote before we move on into the actual thing uh somebody once said don't know who it is but i found it on the internet and it said this the masonic elite will be exposed by their own symbolism and this is what we find here with epstein's island and i hope you enjoy the uh, documentary okay well, the story, as far as I'm concerned myself, actually starts um, not on Epstein's Island, but actually in 2009 onwards, when I moved to Settle. This is very brief, and the, the full detail story, as I mentioned, is not a plug for the book, but obviously, for those that don't know anything about my involvement in the Settle Sundial portal discovery, um, need to really look at all the detail that can be found in the book. Uh, maybe you could borrow it off somebody, or... You know, if you don't want to buy it, or um, there are cheap copies out there now because it's been out a few years now, so you may be able to pick one of those up. But I do recommend it. It's not about plugging the book, it's just about getting the detail from the book rather than be reprocessing it. I do believe actually, somewhere on the internet on YouTube, there is actually a uh, lecture I gave at maybe Pro Conference in Blackpool in the UK um, or elsewhere where I did do quite a detailed. Um, video demonstration of the details from the book so you will find it there as well so basically um very briefly uh for those that don't know my wife and myself were working at an ancient site that we discovered on the slopes of castleberg rock in settle in north yorkshire in the in england and um it turned out that there had once been a significant sort of stone circle a standing stone circle on the side plus a line of large standing stones um, coming down the uh, side of the rock face there and um that disappeared overnight in the 1600s so basically um it seems we felt that there was a cover-up of some kind that whatever the uh it was called the settled sundown and whatever it was um, it wasn't just purely a sundial. It was something else that um, was known to the local Freemasons, local businessmen, people like that, um, and connected directly with a local uh, church and school at Giggleswick, which is a village that's literally only a mile or so away. So you have to look again at all detail, but what we, we found at this stone circle was as soon as we discovered it, all sorts of strange phenomena started taking place there. We were from photographing entities there were strange phantom like owls appearing and um we presented a lot of this evidence as we found it going on and most people were very interested in it but there were a group of people we know it's right from the get-go that um seemed to be driven and i mean driven and one of them is still at it today every time he sees my name he's trying to blacken it in some way or the other and um it's almost as if uh, i don't Feel. I never felt that they were just doing it because they just didn't like me. There was nothing I had ever done to them that would cause this. Uh, and they just 
worked on this theory that they had in their own heads that um, I was a person that should not be within ufology anymore and should not be promoting this ridiculous portal um, information, as they put it. Okay, uh, and it's really interesting because we didn't know at the time when we discovered the actual portal area that um, Isaac Newton, the great scientist who discovered gravity <laughs> or the theory of gravity, uh, which has now actually been superseded by something else, so uh, who himself was a Freemason, and um, he actually had connections, and there is this. There's documentation in the settled area that he actually visited the Sundial portal. Now, that is amazing in itself. So he had this uh, interest outside of his um, scientific, you know, popularity that most people know him by, uh, of being an alchemist and somebody that delved into the unknown, the paranormal, as we call it today. Uh, he was fascinated by Solomon's Temple, obviously, for his free Masonic, you know, connections. And... This has never been shown to history that he ever came up to this area. But shortly after he did, the whole site disappears from the landscape. We were lucky that we actually refound it again. We, we managed to use um, psychic abilities, um, historical evidence, you know, that shows without a shadow of a doubt that the government of the time were behind getting rid of, for some reason, virtually overnight, this portal site, ancient site. Okay. Okay, and we found that uh, when I found the information off um, Epstein's Island, which blew me away basically when I saw what was going on there, and the connection with um, the supposed, you know, um, bringing over to the island of these young children um, and you know, the sexual activities that were supposed to happen there and the, the rumours of child sacrifice and this sort of the other. When I saw the, the drone photograph for the first time of the stone circle around the sundial, okay, it was so similar to what we found at the settle site. It was unbelievable. Um, the one on the outside island seems to be uh, within a stone circle enclosure uh, and the largest standing stones based on the cardinal points of the actual sundial. Um, one of the stones itself is an altar, and this has got Roman numerals on it. Now, what is strange is that um, there was a false depiction of the Settle sundial given, um, you see it again, it's in the book, given to the public, and these were flat stones on the hillside, um, modern flat stones for their time, back in the 1600s, 1700s, where there were Roman numerals on them. Uh, the original settle sundial looked nothing like this. And I found that fascinating that we've got these Roman numerals actually etched onto the stones here at the uh, Epstein uh, sundial as well. Um, I do believe that one of them, somebody suggested at the 12 o'clock position, is actually a uh, altar of some kind. There seems to be um, a channel cut into the rock that, God forbid, it was used for anything like draining blood or anything like that. We do have... Uh, on this photograph that shows you it here, um, it shows the sundial is a classic copy of the Masonic sun. Now, this symbol with the sun with the um, pointed, I think there are all together um, 16 spokes on the sun and eight are straight spokes and eight are flames, as you can see there, uh, coming out from the central sun figure. Um, it's, it's known in Freemasonry law it's actually been shown on some of the, uh, you know, the, the Masonic Temple drawings. You can find it in there. And it's called the Masonic Sun. Well, it's also got other names as well, obviously, because it's more ancient than that. Um, it's also called the Vagina Sun, but it's spelled not as in a, it's spelled V-E-R-G-I-N-A, Virginia, Virgin and probably Sun, and also known as the Macedonian Star of Ancient Greek Origin. Um, the same motif, the exact same motif, is often found on small closed coffins um, of human remains. It's called Harnax. Uh, it was supposed that the energy of this symbol could keep in the essence of the human spirit within the coffin. Uh, all around the sundown on the Essene Island, you can see there are 12 benches, and these seem to be observatory points for people that are sitting within the circle to uh, look at something happening, maybe ritual, within the centre of the circle itself. 
So we mentioned the uh, uh, Masonic Sun. This symbol does crop up a lot, as I said, and, and at the Masonic, Castleburg Masonic Hall, which is literally yards away from the Cecil Sundial portal, um, there are images of this within the hall itself. I've seen them myself. But we captured this photograph, which is fascinating. It shows it's all to do with the energy and the um, the gathering of energy by these people, really, um, through ritual, through ceremony and that type of thing. And um, we, a prominent Freemason was actually attending uh, one of the uh, uh, sessions that were happening on a full moon night. And this would be in about 2010, I think, from what I remember. Um, and, you know, we, we just got a photograph after he actually walked into the doors of the Masonic Hall there. That was his car that parked up. He turned around and looked at us. I took the photograph and he wasn't on it. Obviously, he'd just gone in the door. But on the photograph, this massive energy orb that was just above the actual chapel itself, as you can see, which is unbelievable, the size of it. And, you know, people that say that the dust orbs and things like that, well, <laughs> strange happening to it. Um, and as you can see there, people that say they've got no secrets to keep, the Freemasons and what they do, all the windows there at the top of the hall on both sides are all concreted up. That's the area where they actually do the rituals and ceremonies. So nothing to hide, but nobody can see it. And nobody can break the windows again either. Yeah, uh, a close up of the altar stone on the Epstein sundial found on his island. Um, again, as I mentioned in the um, Isaac Newton and the Secret Sundial book, the Roman numerals which were etched onto the false sundial stones um, that replaced the original pagan standing stones uh, on the Castleburg slopes at Settle. Uh, the Epstein altar stone is at the 12 o'clock position and denoted by a large, which looks like um, almost like a, a fallen down standing stone. Uh, and it's within the outer circle of the actual um, sundial itself. So what do we know about the actual temple? Well, um, you'll see the significance in a minute why I have focused in. This was the first thing I saw before I actually saw the sundial um, within the stone circle on the ground on the island. It was the temple itself. And straight away, there were certain things there that uh, stuck out like a sore thumb for me, really, to show there is a connection between what's going on there on the island and what we found at uh, Settle in North Yorkshire. Uh, the temple itself is of the Syrian styling of Malmok architecture derived from the word meaning slaves. Now, I find that interesting in that many of the um, people that claim that Epstein has been, you know, um, getting sex slaves to go over to the island uh, for the elite. That may be why he chose his particular styling of the building, who knows. Um, the temple itself was built between 2009 and 2013. Well, this is really strange because this is it within the period that we were investigating and, and discovering our finds at the Settle Sundial. Coincidence again? Was there a circle of stones, I wonder, already placed before the temple building appeared there? You know, there may have been, because there seemed to, like we found at a place called, you'll see in a moment, Eaglesbury Chapel, there was evidence that there was a stone circle, actually, um, very close to the chapel itself. So it was another, another power source, another power point um, in the landscape, so to speak. And people that uh, have got some knowledge of the occult will notice this and will focus in on it. On the chapel itself, one of the strangest things is, and this is where the conspiracy theories really have a field day, um, and rightly so, is that uh, on the doors of the chapel, there seems to be um, a large wooden bar, which in this picture, which is the other side of the chapel, um, well, it's like one of the sides of the chapel, actually. You can't see it, but it's a similar doorway to that, and it's got a wooden bar going across there. Um, which is odd, because you would think that the, the chapel would be locked from the inside if anybody was in there. Uh, there was soundproofing in the actual chapel because it's claimed it was used as a music room. Um, soundproofing, what could that cover? Screams, people shouting out. Uh, but on the door side of it, which on this photograph you're looking at would be off to the um, left, you would see uh, this wooden 
large wooden bar like you see on a castle for instance that would stop anybody from actually getting out of the actual um, building itself which i find very peculiar the temple is built on a mound similar to that found at Giggleswick chapel close to the sundal at settle so again the location is very interesting even the trees the palm trees that are around the building seem to suggest that he's been enclosed in within a circular enclosure there um it's difficult to see on the photo but there are a line of symbols outside the door of the epstein chapel that seem to show a date in the future i looked at this um and it's again you can't see it because it's around the other side but if you look on the internet and find other photographs of this temple have a look on the floor immediately around the building it must be around the other side from on this picture and you can see that there are these blocky red line symbols that you can see on the photograph here um but they when you first look at them they actually look like numbers they're like block new numerical shapes um yeah it seems to show a date in the future to me it seems to be made up of zero two zero one one five now knowing how um occultists especially satanic occultists um like to reverse things they, they reverse everything it's part of their way that um, light is dark you know up is down that type of thing I decided to do that with the numbers and you come up with a date that is showing next to the temple the 5th of November 2020. Now, of course, people are going to jump on that straight away and say, well, that's bonfire now, you know. But when best to have some sort of um, sacrificial rite than when the, you know, the hell, the fires of hell are all ablaze all around the European world uh, and elsewhere. The 5th of November 2020. I think we should all make a note of that day. I don't think it's any coincidence that Epstein has disappeared the year before that, um, possibly for a good reason. But does something have to be completed by that date? Is it completely rubbish? And I've just looked too far into it. I'd like to know your own views on that. I don't know. I mean, that's what I see there, and, and I will be making a note of that. And let's see what happens on that particular date. Uh, yes, as mentioned, around the temple itself, there are these maze-like motifs. Um, in particular, take note of what the, you know, the, the the thickness of the lines, the shapes of them there. Uh, these look very similar to those found inside this place called Giggleswick Chapel, um, specifically around the altar area of the chapel, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, the same motifs have been found in Aleppo in Syria, um, that gives that Syrian uh, connection again to the actual building. And you can actually see on this photograph, if you look closely, I've just noticed myself, you can see the uh, bar, the metal bar or wooden bar going across the door there um, on the outside that shows that this building, were, whatever was happening inside it, the people inside it were not supposed to come outside until that bar had been removed. Uh, these maze-like motifs may have been employed to trap earth energy or ritual energy from underground. Um, the energy itself is known in occult terms as vital prana, and vital prana is released from ritual abuse and sacrifice of victims. Um, it's known to, to, you know, to, to be one of the uh, reasons why ritual and sacrifice takes place. So here we have uh, Giggles at Chapel, which is within the um, a mile away from the actual Settle Sundial Stone Circle, but within the uh, constraints of the actual portal area. Uh, note the dome, like on, on the Templar Epstein's Island, um, and the Rocky Mound prominence that it's situated on. This is elevated above the local area this mound and this photograph doesn't give it justice it's a lot higher than what what it shows on here uh, evidence for subterranean tunnels in the area connecting the chapel to Castleburg rock have been found um, we did find one entrance to one of these tunnels that have been talked about and i'll show you in a second or two uh, the chapel itself is very strange it almost almost 
reminded me when I first went into it of Roslyn Chapel, again, connected with the Freemasons and Templars in Scotland, because it seemed to encompass not only Christian values, but actually uh, religious aspects of, of many pagan and other religions from around the world. Um, it's closely associated, the chapel is closely associated with the nearby private school, which had in the past, in the 1600s, connections with those who knew Isaac Newton very well. So you can see this connection of why he would have come up to the Settle Sundial, because he did know people in the area. So this is within Gigglesrick Chapel now, um, and you'll see straight away uh, the swastika, or well, they call it in the local area, the Philfart swastika design, uh, found within the altar at Kigglesworth Chapel. Uh, it's in the same thick, broad line uh, motifs as those on Epstein's Island Temple. You'll better see the colouring is different. It's black and white here, um, mainly blue or red on the Epstein Island, but very, very similar patterns and mazes. Um, incidentally, the Tree of Life can also be found in the chapel's west-facing window. Um, but the question arises, and did for me, uh, explained later by the discovery of a uh, earth-mound enclosure around the actual chapel of pagan and ancient times. What is some worship doing within a um, Christian chapel in the form of a swastika uh, doing there at the altar? Very strange again. So looking for more connections on the island with the uh, Freemasonry, um, you can see here that uh, just as in the chapel and in the Masonic Hall in Settle by the Sundar, we've got the uh, obvious keystone that was used in the arches, which is found in Masonic law as well. Um, the Golden Dome, again, representative of sun symbology, is evident in both buildings, as you saw at Gigglewood Chapel and also here at Epstein's Temple. So, again, something is being ritually worshipped here. The question then that I have to ask myself, um, is this evidence that what we found at Gigglesworth Chapel at the Settle Sundial portal area um, for the similar, if not the same, child sacrifice or ritual? So anybody that's actually read my book will... Um, on the Settle Sundial portal, will uh, know that owls or imagery of owls kept cropping up all the time. Uh, on two occasions, I saw visions of owls appear um, in the trees and within the confines of the actual stone circle itself. Um, during our investigations, um, you'll see in a moment, on one of those investigations, took a photograph of what I saw as an energy ball of light, which turned out to be almost like uh, the Moloch owl-like figure. On Epstein's Island um, Temple, the Owl of Moloch, same as found at Bohemian Grove, um, appears twice on top of the temple building. Now, some have said since that has been known, um, and these two owl-like figures have actually been taken down now off the uh, temple since uh, Epstein died uh, in whatever circumstances are correct and the dome has gone as well now why would you do that it seems for it's almost like the building is being dismantled slow but sure uh, on Epstein Island temple the owl Moloch the same as I mentioned being found at Bohemian Grove some say it's not an owl but a kind of cockatoo bird possibly a phoenix well if it's the latter a phoenix then you are still looking at um, uh, connections with the New World Order, with Freemasonry, with um, the rise of the Phoenix, that type of thing. These were quickly taken down, as was the Golden Dome, as just mentioned, when Epstein was arrested before his demise. It is historically known that children were sacrificed to the god Moloch. Um, and some of you will have seen the, the film footage that came out some years ago from Bohemian Grove, where all the elites are supposed to assemble. Uh, well, they do assemble, there's evidence for that, definitely. Uh, and they say it was just a reenactment, the screams of, of uh, people being sacrificed there and this and the other. Do we know if it's real or not? 
Um, we don't know. Okay, but there you can see the two figures that are on there. Take particular note of the the outline figure in the red circle, the one on the um, left of the photograph. Try and get that picture envisaged in your mind when we move on to the next slide. Right, well, this is the photograph I mentioned that um, I took um, when Helen was present with me. We were on our way back from a walk to actually another uh, site where Isaac Newton had stayed in Langcliffe, um, close to the Settle Sundial portal. And um, it, it was like an energy ball, as I mentioned before, but when the photograph came out, you can see here that it seems to be almost like an owl-like figure that is sitting perched on the wooden fence there. Um, it's large, it's much larger than a normal owl would be compared to the fence railings. Um, and in particular, noting the dark eyes of the owl. Uh, it seems to be looking in the direction of where we've just come from. And um, this happened a lot. We, we sometimes would not only um, see these owl-like figures within the trees, but we would hear screeching and um, strange noises, which we were told were kinds of owls in the woodlands there. So they could have been natural owls or they could have been something paranormal we never found out. But all we did have, I had two visions of owls on two separate occasions. What I find is, is that it's coincidence that we get the Epstein Temple and its imagery with owls associated with the Sundial portal. What, you know, is that just a bizarre coincidence? Now, this photograph is really interesting for me because, again, um, initially I was amazed to find the temple, then find the sundial on the island. Um, but one of the things written about in around 2010 was the um, possibility and then the actual discovery of underground subterranean tunnels uh, connecting certain sites at the Settle Sundial portal. Now, here on this photograph, it's been taken by a drone, you can see clearly that there is some sort of trackway, roadway down to what looks to be a tunnel entrance into the hillside that possibly goes, um, I would imagine, by the look of that, straight to underneath the temple. Again, is this any coincidence? There seems to be a similar doorway in the hillside at um, Gigglesmith Chapel. Again, there is a subterranean level that I always tried to get down to whenever I visited the uh, the chapel, but um, could find no doorways. And the one on the outside, again, was always barred and locked up, so you could never get in there. But certainly there is underground levels to these chapels, and uh, seems to be a similar feature each time. Uh, and this slide just really reiterates what I've said about the underground tunnels. Um, there are rumours that these caves and tunnels have now been filled in concrete and at least one of the tunnels connects to the uh, adjacent island of Greater St. James um, with the temple site and for some reason there seems to be an evidence in date of 2015 when this was discovered. I've not found that myself on the internet yet but if anybody knows about that um, maybe they can comment or or show further insight. I think this is an ongoing thing. I think people should be. I'm amazed that although the FBI uh, have apparently um, been there to actually um, look at what they can find on the island, talk to the to people that were there. There are over 70 people that worked under Epstein on the island, and all of these were, were given notices to never speak to anybody about what actually happens there. But locally, it was known as Pedo Island, or, you know, and was known, they were saying, for uh, child abuse on the island. Well, this really does need to be investigated on an official level properly. Um, it's no good, you know, them taking down. Why have they taken down the owl like figures on the roof? Why have they taken the dome off the temple? Is the temple still there? There is evidence that suggests that. Um, Officially, the state that a hurricane took place, I think it was in 2016 or 2017, and took the dome off. Well, where is the dome now, if that's the case? 
the people have, have looked at the date and it's supposed to happen and there were no hurricane in the area around that time so again you know it's probably all just cover up and lies to why that actual building is there and what it is being what it was being used for um prior to epstein's arrests so not as glamorous as the um landscape on epstein's island of course um north yorkshire is much more rugged terrain but again you can see near the chapel and this is taken on the woodland adjacent to the actual sundial itself in settle um underground tunnels this one actually goes under a house called town head and then there are rumors of the tunnel continuing to um the giggles Street chapel but like find what was supposedly happened at um on epstein's island since the discovery of what's happening there uh, these tunnels at settle have also been filled in but a much earlier date but i do believe a similar thing probably was happening these tunnels were being used to connect the ritual site of the sundial park area to the ancient site as such to the actual chapel at Gigglesvick. um did the rituals take place there i don't know um but evidence is there clear to see you can see they've been barred up the gate now i do think that the, whatever happened at settle um I'm not i don't think it's happening now so do you, i think it is historical and going back to probably the 16 17 1800s um but it doesn't matter when it happened um what we need to do next really is find out did children go missing from that school at giggles you know around them periods is there a way that we can look back and find if if children if there were rumors or any news about children going missing um It'd be interesting i can tell you within the last 10 years there is definitely a case that one of the tutors at giggles week school and this was told to me privately um was arrested i don't know what happened after that he was arrested for um child abuse of teenagers within the school so when i say child abuse i don't mean actually you know ritual abuse and you know, like that is sexual abuse sexual harassment and sexual abuse where that took place whether it's in the chapel or the school um i don't know but i was told by this particular person the name of this person so he's a real person and he still resides somewhere in that particular area of the settle sundial park well we're moving slightly away but it's still about epstein and the island and things now but moving slightly away from the island because one of the the things that you'll see in a minute why i'm bringing this up one of the things that this small group of people who were adamant on rubbishing my name remember i've been involved in ufology for over the sort of 25 30 years um gave regular public talks on on the subject written a, a couple you know a couple of books on the subject it was almost like these people at all costs had to silence me and it was from the moment we made the discovery of a settle sundial portal okay there one of the one of the people in particular who seemed to be the ringleader of this group um her reasoning was that i was only out to try and make money from the portal that was her reasoning so people should say no no so it's a load of rubbish and he's just trying to make money from his discoveries there which are not true he's made them all up well this epstein revelations uh that's come out now two or three years after she she was attacking me shows without a shadow of a doubt that similar things are being found in an area completely you know nearly at the other side of the world now is this just a bizarre coincidence is it that epstein read my book and decided to start designing all of his structures on the settle sundial portal i doubt it there are other areas around the world where these similar things are taking place and on a lot of you know um we've been told that a lot of the elite and people such as the clintons and people around them and around epstein and people in this country believe you me top politicians and people who have access like jimmy savile you'll probably see in another video my connection with jimmy savile out of coincidence not made up 
absolutely true um that these places of ritual sacrifice and, and worship um are energy sites they're energy sites that's all they're not evil in us they're not gateways to hell um and i found that while i worked at them me with my wife helen that most of the time we got um feelings of of um of how can we put it positive vibes positive energy it depends on your own attitude to what you want to use these sides for they're just energy sides that's all but if you plug into them and give evil intent or sacrifice children at them for instance you're gonna um how can i put it you're gonna give the battery of that area that essence of energy and that will build and build and build and you will create um, thought forms. You will entice lower energy entities, dimensional entities, to you who will use you for their own ends, believe you me. Although Epstein did all this and these people think they're so powerful, the Clintons, that's like, no, they are actually being used themselves by these interdimensionally low-level entities of these sites um, for their own gain. It isn't it isn't the other way around they think that by appeasing these entities by you know getting a sense of power from um abusing children killing children sacrificing children within sexual um activities releasing energies to these sites that they will progress and gain more power um the used are being used believe you me so we find uh, Epstein, this is just a bizarre coincidence again. I like to put these in there just to show you that most of what I'm saying is made up. It's based on fact. Uh, Epstein had another property that he owned in New Mexico, which he called the Zorro Ranch. Um, this was uh, really interesting because you can see the building there. It was built sort of more or less on a Greek type um, architecture in a way by the looks of things. But this massive i mean if you look at the building and then look at the actual uh you know dimensions of this raised platform there is this again motif that this symbology that has been placed within the landscape there whether it's lawns and water or whatever some say that the central disc in the middle is a, a water pool but without a shadow of a doubt we've all seen that symbol there before anybody's interested in the explained or the occult and it's the rings of atlantis now bizarre coincidences come into these things where i've channeled an entity um that i believe was a celestial being by that i never felt like a pinpoint into any one planet or a star system or anything like that and a lot of these people claim that you know when they channel entities from not this world they usually have a, an origin for i always had to call him celestial because i didn't know the only thing i did know from channeling with him was that is energy aligned and I always felt it was some sort of like a, a doctor or a surgeon or something like that within a temple in Atlantis. And that's the only real indication I got um, that he, for me, for, for me, what he looked like and where he was from, I would say he's human or superhuman and exists in Atlantis. And that is Sherlock, my guide. Now, again, these same people have mocked me. He's making all of this up. He channels, he's making it up, it's just for money, blah, blah, blah. Yet, I've been channeling the same entity. I haven't been doing it recently because there are medical reasons why. But I've been channeling this entity for nearly over 30 years. And I can see now why and how. Um, everything's an adventure of discovery. We, we're only human beings and we're finding out all of the time new aspects of things to build a, a bigger picture as david i says we're connecting all of the dots and to get the full picture but i found this interesting that epstein may have been even though i do believe he was an evil person uh, of course for what he's done and that um he seems to have been um aware somehow of the connections of where these earth energies were last used in a massive way was through the atlantean period uh, uh, what we call you know the lost city of atlantis 
So you can see here very quickly um, at Plato's depiction of Atlantis. And if you look back at the, the motif on the ground that Epstein had in uh, New Mexico, his ranch there, you know, the similarities. There are, uh, I think, on the actual, there are three rings of water and three rings of land and then a central car. But he's obviously trying to replicate on that land, Atlantis. Reasons why? Who knows? Um, but it's to do with energy, definitely. He was aware of earth energy and aware of lay energy. And I do believe that he was using that as primary as reasons for laying down this, this symbology on his island and elsewhere. So I hope you found that interesting. I really wanted to outline um, the similarities there, which I think I have done. Um, there's not enough detail there for you to actually you know, say, yeah, 100% this is right. What I would ask you to do is to compare the finds of the Settle Sundial and the new Epstein Island revelations um, by um, looking at the information online that I previously published or buy the book or get the copy of the book from someone to have a read of, um, whichever way to actually get more details about what we found at Settle so you can compare them with the Epstein Island and find out what's going on. I have put it on a back burner because I'm very busy with, with other projects that I do. But I do believe that the next stage is to look into, because I think this is a worldwide phenomenon that really needs other people in other areas. If you have suspicions of um, the elite or higher ups or Freemasons or whatever um, being involved in such activities, or even personalities is being found uh, are doing this and are connected with these people like Epstein. If you find that there is a connection with occult activity or they visit a certain ancient site more frequently than what would normally be for them type of people, well, maybe you should look into that a little bit deeper and find out is there any similar connections? Is this something that is happening in more areas than just on the Epstein Island and at Settle? That's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do, and this is the most important part of all of this, is, and this is mainly because of the very, very sad situation we have in this country and elsewhere around the world of child trafficking, is to stop this from happening ever again. And the only way that that will happen is if we can expose these elites that are doing these rituals and things to children and causing them so much harm and trauma to the survivors and stop the deaths of the people of the children that are dying in rituals um, by exposing them. We need to carry on that work and do that. And I'm hoping that after Epstein's death, I can't see it because it's a massive cover up right from the top, even down to the judges, that they will actually do this eventually. And that will only come about by as showing these things. He's, what I've tried to show today these coincidences more than just conspiracies. They're actually things that are actually happening in the real world. And it's our responsibility to actually stop that from happening by exposing and giving over information that shows what the real story is and how deep this really runs. Okay. Um, so I just want to mention to you very quickly that um, I'm absolutely sure now that the reason I was um, hounded out of ufology, I mean, I did leave on my own terms in the end because it just wasn't allowing me all this this trouble they were causing me um, and threats they were causing me. I won't say how deep those threats ran, but they were quite serious, so serious that I had to get the police involved. But they were doing it in a way to stop me, really, which has been proven because for the last two years, I've not been involved in ufology. I've never mentioned the Settle Portal. It's all stopped. They haven't been interested in me at all, which is good news for me, but it shows what their purpose was. And they can, they'll still do. I know they will do it now. They'll try and call me names, even though they'll say, look, he, he's, he's talking rubbish. He's found one particular thing. He's adding it. He's just trying to make the portal sound important. I'm not. I want you to make your mind up about this. Look at the symbology on both of these things. Is it similar? Does it seem to fit in? You decide that yourselves. But these people will attack again and they will try to stop anyone that's associated with myself from projecting this in, in an honest and true light. 
They don't want to do that. And the only way they can do it is to attack me, the person. Okay. Um, how did they do it before? Well, they did it in a number of ways. Um, it's definitely been um, organised, I do believe, at a high level by either a secret society or Freemasons operating within the UK that, and elsewhere. And I do believe that they are um, aware of the significance of what has happened in the past of the Settles on the Dial and its relevance probably to other places that this is currently happening at within the UK and elsewhere. So no information about this is being should be allowed to be released. What they, did they do to me while I was releasing this information? Um, well, at a major UFO conference in the UK in 2012, um, I, I was I noticed that in the audience there seemed to be one particular person who looked very out of place, very clean dressed, almost looked like a James Bond type figure. Um, didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the audience. Kept himself to himself, just to sit aside. And I mentioned to my wife a few times that chap is just watching us. He's, he's, he's just there to observe. He's not actually interested in the conference. And lo and behold, a couple of years later, I actually challenged him because this went on for some time and um, asked him if he was a Freemason. His face went white. He got up out of his chair and he bolted. Well, that says it all. I found out later who he was and where he was from. He was from a Masonic Lodge just outside Settle, where the sundial happens to be. So obviously he was sent to us to watch. And there was other um, Freemason agents who were sent, one was a female who tried to buy me off by getting me to, to actually um, listen to what she had to say. And she was actually trying to discover really things that I was talking about, about the portal on a more personal level. That didn't work either. Okay, and then on, on another occasion at the same conference, and this is the conference that these people um, I'm talking about have now taken over, they actually run it. So you could see what the progression was here, get me out of the way. I mean, I had no intention of running it. I was just a speaker there and always ever was. I was very good friends of the original person that um, started the conference many years ago. And they pushed him aside slightly to be able to run the conference themselves in the way they want to run it. And I don't know how that's going. I'm not interested. But what I do is while I was there and they were doing these things, you know, that was their intention was to stop me from speaking about the portals anymore. So what I found was that the um, associated one of these people, and again, one, quite a prominent Freemason, who actually knew Jimmy, uh, knew Jimmy, so, sorry, that's wrong, actually knew Cliff Richard. Now, people can go down that rabbit hole if they want to, who visited the Pro Conference. Um, again, the ties are all there with what we're talking about with Epstein and, and royalty and the rest of it. Um, she invited me to look at some documentation that she said would help me with my portal sundial discoveries. And they're out in her car. Well, in the dinner lunchtime break at the conference, I went out to her car. I was given something, she said, that would help me with my health. Um, and that's all I remember. I don't remember. I remember showing me this little veil of this black stuff. I don't know what it was. And then the next minute, I was sort of like saying, well, I'll see you getting out of the car, but feeling a bit, bit odd, a bit tired. And then going back to my wife, my wife asked me, where have you been? The whole conference had restarted. To me, I'd only been minutes in that car, but at least an hour, an hour and a half had passed by that I cannot recollect. So all the things were going on there, very strange, they were trying to do with me. Um, as I don't know. I mean, it just seems very odd. I don't know what the answer to that is. I've never seen this person again since. Um, uh, I do know I was being sort of followed by people who claim to have lived with me in other countries when I lived abroad as a young child, uh, um, but I have no recollection of them. Very, very odd. Anyway, um, so they were the uh, sort of like pre-attacks before they did work. So what they went on to them was to hound my name and to, to you know, at home in me really with slander and rubbish and 
trying to just make people in the paranormal community and especially in the UFO community to see me as somebody that's just dishonest, a liar and a cheat, basically. Um, there is something that, that's happened, though, in the last two years that I definitely need to talk about now, and that's how I'm going to end this video. And that is all the time that I, I've been involved in ufology, all the years, 25, nearly 30 years now, um, I've been under this thing, you know, no definite proof of this, but under this thing sort of um, understanding that we're dealing with several types of entities from other worlds, other planets, um, other universes, other galaxies. And they might be able to get here in ways that we can't imagine. They might be able to appear to us in ways that we can only imagine. Um, and that's why I've written most of my um, information, especially with the portal as well. I follow certain types of entities that have been known in the UFO circles before. Um, but I, I believe now firmly, I'll tell you where, the, where this came from. It was actually while I was, before the, the, the Settle Sundar portal stuff came about, um, and I have evidence that this really happened because somebody was stopping at me with me in a flat um, at the same time who actually saw the same spirit of a little girl. I put her about, I don't know, um, 12? No, younger than that, eight. She looked youngish, you know, young age. Um, and I can see it clearly in my mind's eye now as I talk about it to you. And she appeared to this person who was sleeping on my couch, but then appeared the same night to me in a dream, um, or what I thought was a dream, uh, saying that she was a spirit located with that particular flat. And she told me that um, we want to give you something to show you in the future, um, almost like a thank you, um, what this is all about. And then instantly she was gone. And I was in the vastness of what you would call space, what we call space. But it wasn't space. It wasn't the space that NASA shows us or, you know, the universe as such with the solar system and planets going on. There was nothing of that there. And I thought, well, I'm in a different place to that. But I felt so close to home that I knew I must be somewhere near the Earth. But nothing out there looked familiar. All I could see with my own eyes in this visionary experience was just a oneness of energy, a oneness of love, um, a oneness of what we probably call God, just a creational force everywhere. And it was so amazing that when I woke up instantly after this had stopped, I was still in this sort of um, euphoric feeling, really, that I've been given this sort of like insight into what reality is about, um, that we don't normally see every day. And it, it seemed more real to me the next time I looked up at the night sky than what the night sky did. It seemed to be the real reality, but the night sky and everything around us seemed to be almost like a the visionary experience. You know. Um, so I started even from then thinking, is everything that's around us, what we're actually realizing, actually true? Is it correct? Are we being fed information into us all of the time that gives us a sense of reality? And I think people should really listen now to David Icke while he talks about what reality is and how how we're programmed into this matrix of, of reality and what it may be to us all um, to understand this better than I can ever explain. But that sense of oneness with everything, with everybody and everything is something that I do think we are spiritually trying to progress to. Now, I mentioned my guide, Charlotte, a minute ago, we were talking about Atlantis and Atlantean times. I never felt it was an ET or an extraterrestrial from another planet or another solar system. And I categorically believe now that we are being led a lie within ufology. Those people that, that, are, that would know the truth. There are many, many out there that don't know. They're just, be, they're just repeating like science does. They're repeating within ufology 
the old cases, the, 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 you know, the, the, based on all the classic UFO cases of what it's supposed to look like, what they mean, what it happens, what it doesn't matter. But those, uh, and they'll go on like that forever, I'm sure they will. And that's what to them UFOs will be. They'll either be nuts and bolts craft from another planet or another solar system or something, or they'll be interdimensional, or they'll be, they have all these theories. But what I think has happened here is that we've been bamboozled. I don't think that any of these craft or any of these entities are anything like we are imagining or we are realising. No matter how physically real they seem at the time, um, I do think we're being fed from somewhere earthbound. And I would look at um, things like Project Monarch, um, I would look like that's where I, I would go from looking at my own life experience uh, of what's happened to me in my life to where I am today. That there are um, NC energies out there, but I think they're pretty earth bound. And I do believe that the elites know this. I do believe that we're not really going anywhere, but the, this planet. <laughs> isn't just a planet on its own. Like, like, let's not go down the road of flat earthers or something like that. This is different to that. This is like a reality that has been produced somehow, and I haven't got a clue, I don't think anybody has, for our own senses to appreciate. And whatever is painted out there by the authorities is just um, a projection for us to give us some sort of um, understanding, to something to grasp to. But I don't think it's real. And I don't think the UFO phenomena in the way it's been presented since 1947 onwards is real in the sense that we can perceive it as real. I think it's a projection of something that most of humanity can cope with. But it's much deeper. The rabbit hole goes much deeper than that. And this is why this is to do with dimension still. It is to do with the interdimensional entities. But I'd be very careful if you deal with any UFO entities yourselves or have contact with them to believe everything they are actually telling you. Because my own senses told me now that we are being lied to, not only by those that are in power in this world, and their agenda is quite a simple one. Their agenda is to change humanity. You can see it happening in various different ways, whether it comes from eugenics, whether it's coming from uh, people that are looking into the medical aspects of making us biomechanical beings. It's coming to a point where they want to lose something that's vital within humanity we have now, and that's the essence of the soul, which makes up our own individuality and also gives us that freedom to explore and um, choose for ourselves. I do believe that this project has been in place since at least 47 to make out that there's an external threat or an external um, possibility of a threat of ETs and extraterrestrials visiting this world who are superior to us. And so we stay in our place. That is my, and that is why I believe now, whether they admit it or not, was behind the attacks at Blackpool, the attacks of this small group, and the attacks from the Freemasons, because they know that me and my wife Helen hit the nail on the head with the Settle Sundial portal, the interdimensional reason and the rituals they have at these places for attracting and trying to use energies which are non-human as such but exist within the matrix of the earth reality i hope that makes sense um i'm just trying to read the notes i've got my thing here to just make sure i don't miss out on anything this but the end game at the end of the day i believe by these authorities and the type of people that were attacking me if you met them they could easily be bought off easily they didn't seem to, in the way they talk and the way they act, they don't have an ounce of decency in them. So they'd be the type of people who would do the dirty work for these that are higher up. 
not so called the elites because I think this is way down below that. I don't believe I'm worthy of that of that attention. But I do believe that would hit on something that they would feel we shouldn't have done. And at all costs, you know, we have to be silenced. We have to be shut up. And the best way, rather than use violence or anything like that, was to move me out of the subject. Well, they did me a big favour because it gave me time to evaluate the subject and really see ufology for what it is. And believe you me, it is not what is being promoted at this particular time or for the last 40, 50 years. It is something very, very darker than that. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. I hope you'll enjoy looking at this. If you, you've got any more questions you want to ask me, you can find me on Facebook. Um, difficult with these videos because of the length of time and uploading things like that. But I hope that you've got some insight into what, what we did back then. And I hope this vindicates for all those that still want to say, well, he came from ufology into the power of rest of the paranormal because he got kicked out of there because he lied about this, made things up and that. Well, now you've got something to compare it by, okay? And really think, has he made all this up? I doubt it. Because if I had, then you've got to say that Jeffrey Epstein's Island is all made up, but it's all over the news now and everybody can see it. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching and hope you enjoy it. Bye.